All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you my new compact cinema rig. I'm gonna give you guys two options, an autofocus option. You can still get super cinematic footage out of this setup. And then the second setup will be a more true, like, you know, cinematic build out to where I'm gonna put anamorphics on there. The whole point of this is for super compact build out. Why? A lot of times when I'm on road trips by myself and I'm trying to shoot like those cinematic road trips, I'm using anamorphics, I need a follow focus, I need a wireless system. The A7C2 is just a tiny bit smaller and it just allows you to, you know, keep it compact. Obviously you can still use this on an FX3, uh, A7S3, you know, whatever camera you want, like a Nikon Z8, like whatever camera. The reason I'm doing the A7C2 Dan sampled 7K into 4K. So on YouTube, I like to go and crop in. I do 1.5 to 2X crops. So having that down sampled extra sharp footage kind of helps with that. And just the foreign factor. I personally haven't had any issues with overheating, but anyways, let's get into the build out now. Also, what inspired me to do this video was the new Sony 24 to 50 millimeter F2.5. This thing is a tiny powerhouse. I think some people might want to compare this to the Tamron 20 to 40 millimeter, which I love that lens as well, but I had some gripes with it. One, there's no aperture ring on it. Two, there was no autofocus or mount of focus switch on it. All right guys, so to start off, we're gonna do the autofocus setup and then we'll do the Blazar Remus anamorphics and I got a focus solution and a wireless solution that's way smaller. A7C2, I have the tilted cage on here and you can see I really hacked it up. We'll get into that. That has to do with the anamorphic build out and the basically internal NDs, I guess you would call it. But before we get into that, let's just slap this new Sony 24 to 50 millimeter on there. Just this alone, you guys can see how freaking compact this setup is. I own the, the Sony 24 to 70 G Master uh, version two. This honestly looks just as sharp as that. You could shoot majority things on there, but let's go over audio real quick. Two options for audio. If I'm doing any talking head and I'm moving around a lot and I'm further from the camera because I'm trying to add compression, that's a trick. So for instance, guys, we have this beautiful red mountain in the backdrop. If we're shooting at 24 millimeters, you're not gonna really be able to see that. I wanna add compression. That's the trick to getting a little bit more of a filmic cinematic look is don't stop shooting everything wide. Some of your favorite directors do shoot things wide, but they're layering things in there and they're able to bring things a lot closer. If you can't do that, you could go in tighter. Roger Deakins' uh, favorite focal length, I think is 40 millimeters. So when all the YouTubers are like, oh, you gotta shoot wide, you gotta go wider. If it looks good, obviously do whatever you want. But my personal advice is start around 40 millimeters and then go wider or tighter from there. I will be at 24 millimeters like this. And if I'm doing this, and again, I'm just, my main point of the video is like to, to pass on information or anything like that. I'm going to use this Sony. I think this is the B1M mic. What do I love about this mic? There's a few things. One, no cables needed. I hate cables. So anytime I could get away from cables, I'm going to. This electronically connects to your Sony. So when you adjust the, the audio's levels in the camera, it's basically communicating with this. Second thing, which I think this is more important, a lot of the time, say if we're shooting BTS, or I'm trying to document a process, right back here, we can change the dynamics of the mic. So right now, this is set as like a, a standard shotgun mic. You can see the little circle here. Everything behind the mic, it's going to cut out. And then we have this middle option to where it's going to collect all the ambience that's basically from this point out. But a lot of the times, if I'm trying to shoot something and I'm trying to explain something and I'm back here, the mic's not gonna catch this. Uh, right now on our BTS camera, we're using the Sennheiser mic. And a lot of times I gotta unscrew it, flip it around and then get back into it. And then I gotta redo that and half the time I forget to do that. So on here, I can simply just hit that switch. I can say what I need. I'm talking to my subject. I'm talking about whatever I'm talking about here. And I'm able to capture everything. Say if I am doing the compression, DJI wireless mic twos, I absolutely love these things. One, it has 32 bit float. So a lot of the times, even if I'm like not sure if the, the camera's gonna be able to pick it up or, or if I just need to record some audio, I could just open this up, click the red button. I'm gonna get 32 bit float recordings internally on there. I like to do that a lot as backup and just overall, there's, everything's been updated and it's just better on this thing. This setup alone, I could shoot everything I ever want to on this setup. I can even do like commercial work on this if I wanted to. But again, the only reason I'm gonna show you guys this next setup is solely because I'm pretentious and I want to shoot anamorphic and I just love that look. Shooting on anamorphic inspires me to get off my ass and just to go film it. So before I get into the cinematic build though, I need to talk about this lens. It stays out of your way. Sony's not letting me keep this and I'm sad because I wish I could keep this just because again, look at this setup. First off, we have an aperture D-click. 
This is very important. I even had my buddy Luis helping me film another review and we're going in and out of dark light and really harsh light. So he was able to just use the aperture dial like this and feather the exposure as needed. But if you're gonna use this for photography, you can turn the D click on. We do have a custom function button on here. I personally don't use these on any lenses really. Uh, if I did use them, maybe I use them to like turn on focus peaking. Actually, I should maybe do that. I think I will do that. We have the autofocus and mount of focus switch. This is super important. Autofocus on Sony cameras are amazing, but sometimes you want it to do something that, you know, a computer just can't do. When you go to 24 millimeters, it does extend over here. When you go down to 50, it goes and tucks in right there. So when it's in the bag, you know, at this form factor, super tiny. If you're gonna be at 24, it does extend a little bit. This is still insanely tiny though. So like, who's this lens for? I think if you've been salivating over the 24 to 70 Mark II, and you know, you don't really care about the extra 20 millimeters on the end, which I don't think is that big of a deal. I think this lens is a, a no brainer. 24 to 70 Mark II is a G Master lens. This is a, a, a Sony G lens and it's holding up. Let me show you the parts that I'll be using. I'll be using the Mofage Poco VND. This is the main reason I had to chop up the cage purely just to get that to, to clear. From there, we have the Asun. This is the Sinview Nano. Previously, I was using the DJI wireless monitor, which I still love that setup. But for solo stuff, and I'm trying to keep it compact, that thing's pretty big. And then we have the Tilta Nano 2 focus motor. The reason I like this is because I could power it via USB-C. You might be like, what am I going to plug it into? Let's get into it. The Poco VND, this thing is amazing. If you're using PL lenses, this just makes your life way easier. They're pretty affordable compared to the competition and the quality on them is amazing. After I cut that down to have clearance so I can actually rotate the VND, I went and chopped up the top a little bit. So now I could just take it off. This is the tilted cage. I had to take an angle grinder to it. If you guys want to do that to do a similar setup, go ahead. It might be easier if you just do the Sony FX3 with the Condor Blue cage. But again, this is for A7C2 owners or people contemplate getting this. Let's do our wireless system here. So usually on a wireless setup, you know, you need a transmitter, you need a receiver and connect to that receiver. You need an external monitor. Uh, when I'm traveling, it's that's kind of the worst part about having to film myself in a cinematic, like anamorphic way. I'm always having like have an extra monitor and carry it on me. And, and then like I have to try to hide it in the shot if I'm doing something crazy. So now with this, basically what this does is this creates like a wireless Wi-Fi connection to your iPhone or to your iPad. I could set up my shot there, get it composed, make sure my mic levels are good. I could just put my phone in my back pocket and I'm starting to record and there's no monitor in sight or anything like that. There's no monitor, giant monitor hanging on here at the V-mount. There's none of that that you need for this setup. I absolutely love this. It just connects through a NPF battery right here. I did a small rig NPF because you could charge it via USB-C. And my uh, Ford Bronco over here, there's tons of different USB-C ports and adapters that I have. And I usually have a power station in my truck too. How I did this is when I went and grinded down this cage over here, uh, I had to grind down the two quarter uh, 20 threads over here, but I left the bottom one and there was just enough clearance to where I could keep that on there. There's literally probably like a millimeter left of metal on there. So from there, let's get the lens on before we go to the focus motor and I show you how I power that. These are currently my favorite go-to anamorphics. These are the Blazar Remus 1.5X. These are great for any sensor that only reads out in a 16 by nine output. The reason I like these for, you know, almost everything right now, especially for solo run and gun, you know, YouTube video type stuff, look how small this is. Look at this. This is the 24 to 50, the new one. This is the Blazar Remus 45 millimeter. I'm just gonna go with the 45. I use the 45 and the 65 millimeter the most. The 45 sometimes feels a little bit too wide, but obviously if you're, uh, you know, shooting yourself on a road trip or anything like that, a 45 for like inside car stuff or whatever, gonna be the go-to. So before we get any further, look at this setup, guys. Look how compact this is. For this setup, you can literally shoot, you know, super filmic, cinematic, cinema quality, type videos. Let's get into the focus solution. Once you start going and trying to do creative setups or anything like that, and you're getting away from your camera and you're having to guess where the focus is, it's a nightmare. A little things like that is enough to stop me from, you know, picking up the camera and actually using it. I'm using this small rig. It's a NATO rail into a 15 millimeter rod support. This is the Tilta's rod that comes with the focus motor. I'm just going to plug that into the Tilta focus motor. Now you're going to be like, where, where are you going to plug that in at? Like the, there's no battery on here. This Asus Sinview Nano has a five volt USB-C output. 
This is crazy. That's gonna power the motor. That's pretty freaking wild. I'm gonna just clean it up a little bit. Let me see if I can. All right, let's focus control. Now I'm gonna open up my ASUN app here. So guys, I'm just gonna go to my Wi-Fi on my phone. Oh, it's called a Simu. You guys can see in the ASUN app, we have D-Stretch. So I'm gonna keep clicking this. We're on 1.5X. We are getting anamorphic D-Stretch right internally on our phone here. So again, this is why I need a cage on here so I could just attach this under here. But look, I'm getting focus control straight on the camera here. This is sick. I don't have to deal with any crazy monitors anymore. I could import my own custom LUTs onto here. There's just, there's a million different things I can now do with this setup. This is a full on professional cinema grade setup. I know some of you like more pretentious, like filmmakers might be like, oh, like you could never use it on set. If you needed to, you could use this on a set. We're getting anamorphic, 1.5X anamorphic on a 7K down sample, 4K readout, wireless transmission, wireless focus with internal VND. This is, this is all you need. Look at this. Am I the only one that's impressed by this? Jared goes this opera because we're too lazy to get a tripod out. I'm gonna just rack focus to the background here and then I'm gonna get focus back on me. How sick is that? I'm gonna just, you know, I'm just, this is so sick. Imagine if I'm trying to like show you guys this app and I'm trying to shoot this video on anamorphic. I'm gonna, right there, there we go. Say this is the camera in my hand, I could, Go and land my focus here, right about there. That's super sick. I like this. This is cool. This is cool. Not gonna lie, this is pretty cool. Guys, maybe in the next video, I'll do a LiDAR setup. So, yeah, this is sick. Now we're on the Sony a7C2 with the 24 to 50 f2.8 millimeter with the Sony B1M or whatever it's called <laughs> microphone. Uh, even Jericho, this is Jericho's first time using the setup and he's smiling because we had to set audio levels and he could just turn the dial. This is like a, it feels like a mini FX6 build almost just having like those audio uh, dials on there. Um, Jericho was saying that he's excited actually to buy this lens now because he said that's all I need and he likes how small it is. So I'm gonna ask Jericho why. While he's talking though, I'm gonna show the example of the mic. Right now the mic's set as a shotgun. So Jerry, give me a quick sentence on what you first thought was exciting about this new lens. Uh, I appreciate that it's small and it has the uh, range that I need. I don't really need that full punch in, so. Okay. Now go to the back of the, the mic, put it to the last setting, to the fully ambient. But I believe this is gonna be either half or lower than half the price of the 24 to 70 uh, Mark II. Jericho's raising his eyebrows. Is there any reason you would wanna go over the 24 to 70 over the 24 to 50 besides just price? Yeah, if I really needed to punch in that much, I, I would take the 70, but most of the time I'm walking forward. The only time I'm zooming in that much is if I'm cropping out stuff in the background. So this will work perfect. There you guys go. Uh, and hopefully you're able to hear what the mic sounds like that. Now, real quick, Jericho, will put it back on you. Okay, Jericho's six foot. He has longest arms. There's a bend in his elbow. We're at 50 millimeters right here. I'm just gonna go and zoom out. This is it at 24 millimeters here. And again, guys, we're on the mic, we're on the ambient mode. So you should be able to hear me. I'm gonna change it though. Now we're in the shotgun mode, so I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear me now. Uh, but yeah, Jericho, what do you think of this this compact thing here? Uh, yeah, it's really nice. I think, oh yeah, that's some good room. I mean, I don't do selfie stuff, but if you wanted to, this yeah. would be perfect. Yeah. Again, it's a lot lighter, you're getting that range. I think the only thing that could be a downfall is maybe it's too small, you know? Sometimes the uh, oh the clients the reps yeah. like the big lenses. Yeah. You know, I'll put a matte box. Yeah, on put a, it. they'll <laughs> love it. Put a little mini matte box on here. Yeah. Also, guys, I have to mention we're using uh, the Polar Pro VND, the Maglock one. We've actually dropped it a few times, and it looks pretty battle scarred up already. <laughs> um, but the glass is not broke. Polar Pro VND is a tank of a VND. So anyways, I'll <laughs> stop ranting. Okay, that's it. We're done.